Hey everybody, thanks for watching today's tutorial. We are going to be jumping into the basics of Adobe Premiere Pro and also doing a little bit of a quick little assignment, just kind of making a, an intro screen or title screen, if you will, using Adobe Photoshop as our graphic creator and then bringing that Photoshop document into Adobe Premiere Pro and animating the various different layers of that document. So a couple little programs we're going to be working through here. I'm going to assume that you know the basic interface and the workaround with Adobe Premiere Pro. I did create an extended version of this video. What I will do is I will basically, I'm going to re-edit this and I will post just this tutorial section. So the segmented down section so that you can do the tutorial get yourself uh, the assignment completed. But if you want to learn a little bit more about all the different tools or you're struggling to get the tutorial because you're missing some features and, and steps, uh, you can watch the extended version, kind of just scrub your way through that and learn those different uh, added features. I also worked with a little bit of a time-lapse video, did some speed correction and stuff and, uh, and kind of jazzed up a little bit of a 3D printer time-lapse video that we did. So that'll all be in the extended long run video but right now i just wanted to get this tutorial out to you really quickly so that you can get working on your various different assignments hope you all have a blast and have a good time right. um, obviously using video footage that's like a <laughs> a a teaching tutorial not ideal so we're gonna have some fun here this is where I need you guys to follow along we're gonna create our own sort of footage so you all by now should be half decent in Photoshop and I need you to open up your Adobe Photoshop and we are gonna make a quick little assignment in Adobe Photoshop and bring that into Adobe Premiere Pro and then give it some animation and some edits and stuff if you're not following along please try to um, because you're going to have to go through this again on your own to finish this video, like in order to do this video, this basic video. So sort of from here on out, uh, please be following along. If you're not doing it already, I would suggest, highly suggest you open up Adobe Premiere Pro and try to follow along with us and Adobe Photoshop. That means you guys sitting right in front of me doing nothing. Follow along, please. Okay, here we go. So, create a new document in Photoshop. Because we're making a video, we can go into the film and video section and we can utilize the preset that is already here for HGTV 1080p, right? If you remember, we did the settings for 1920 by 1080. So this is how we're going to go with this one. Uh, select this preset and we should be good to go to hit create and it will pop in there and give us a nice big white box to get started with. We are going to, basically we're going to animate our names and a picture of ourselves. So we're going to bring in the picture in here and our name in here uh, in two separate uh, instances. So firstly, bring in the picture of yourself. So go file, place linked, and see if you can find one of the pictures of yourself. Um, I think I have it in here someplace resources where did I hide pictures of me I don't remember where I put this, but I'm going to bring this in. We'll just use this as a, 
as a thing. This is a picture that I already created. Your guys' is obviously going to look a little bit differently than mine. Uh, yeah, actually, you know what? I'm going to do this a little differently. I'm going to open this by itself. And then I can yank this picture out of here. All right. Perfect. Okay, so you have a picture of yourself. You're going to make sure you scale it to fit the screen, right? Um, this uh, template that popped up here, it comes up with these extra guides that are on the screen. And it allows you to kind of know what are, what we call them the safe areas in, uh, uh, in our stuff. They would be the safe areas in our... Um, in our video and they recommend not to have text go outside of these boxes simply because different resolutions of TV may or may not show items outside of those boxes. So in this case with this picture, we want it as big as we can get it, uh, but it doesn't need to be like, make sure your eyes or your forehead or whatever, like don't cut yourself off. Like don't do this. That would be really bad because you'd have your eyes be potentially outside of the screen. Right? Make them nice off to the side here. Right? And I will give you creative license. I happen to be kind of looking more or less to the left. There's, it's just a naturally better to have space on the left hand side. So if it works better for you to have your picture on the right though, because you're looking to the right, uh, that's fine. I'm going to, I'm going to leave it over here on the left hand side. So it's good to go. Um, my picture happens to have this border around it already. Um, so if yours doesn't have a border around it, um, you can go to the effects panel here. You can add a stroke and your stroke. In my case, it was a nine point stroke. You can make it a little thicker if you wanted, um, but you just want to have a, an obvious line around your graphic. And we're just going to hit okay. And that will save that change. Okay. Then we're also going to add, we don't really want this bright white block to show up right away on our thing. So we're going to draw ourselves in um, a nice shape um, into the background here. So we're going to take the rectangle tool and we're just going to draw basically a new background. And it's going to, of course, show up on top of our picture that we already placed. So we're going to do our settings to this first. We're going to go into our fill color. We're going to make it, uh, let's make it the, the JP red here. So the JP red, um, if you're following along is tw it's a CMYK color. So I've memorized it as 26 cyan, a hundred magenta, a hundred yellow, and then it's zero black. And this is our like official JP red. It looks kind of funny sometimes on computers. It's lighter than it is. It just actually turns out more of like a darker maroon kind of red, um, but it still works. So we're going to take this background layer and we are going to move it underneath our picture of ourselves. So we have our background layer. We have the picture of ourselves. And then we are going to add on top of all of that stuff, we're going to add some text. So this text is going to come up here like this and you got to watch how I do this because we need it in specific blocks of text in order to animate um, the different text. So you click in here, obviously set the size to be much bigger. Um, I'm going to leave it with impact, uh, but you can change the font if you'd like to change your font, depending on what, what your last font used was. It might come up with something that's a little bit hard to read. Um, so we're going to call this um, basics of Adobe uh, Adobe PP would sound a little inappropriate so we'll go uh, premiere okay you can actually put this onto two lines if you need to uh, 
basics of Adobe Premiere Pro. Okay, and you can have this be one setup. Um, I have my text centered. Uh, if it's not looking like mine, it's because it might be left justified. So I've got it centered so that it just shows up nice and even. So we have one line that says basics of Adobe Premiere Pro. We're going to create a new text document uh, or a new text line. Um, so we go to the horizontal text again. And then we're going to call this. You're going to put your name in here. Now, if you bring this Lori Ipsum over here, you can see these little pink lines show up. That tells you you're in the center or you're lined up with the one above you. Um, so if you do that first and then you double click, you're able to go in here. And I'm going to change this to my name. So Donovan, right? And then you're going to have one more line underneath this. So create a third text box. If you want, you can obviously type in it first before you move it around. Um, and then this one is going to be my position. So in this case, it's teacher. And underneath that, I'm going to put Jasper Place High School. You guys, on the other hand, are obviously going to put student Jasper Place High School. If anyone tries to pretend that they're a teacher at Jasper Place, that would be a little bit hilarious. So make sure you put student in here. Student Jasper Place High School. And then because in my case, this looks a little bit too big, I'm going to actually shrink down the Jasper Place High School so that the font is a little bit smaller on that third line. Okay. I like it in white. It's going to be easy for us to see and edit and, and work with. Uh, I'm going to bring this down just a pinch for myself here and sort of center my name. So you've got basics of Adobe Premiere Pro, your name, student, just replace high school. Okay. We're going to take this document now. And we're going to do a file save as, and you're going to save it into your F drive where you have your video footage. So go to your block, your Comtech block, find your video folder, and you're going to drop it in there. Now, obviously don't just untitled it. You can have this be, call it title screen maybe. And we're going to leave it as a Photoshop document, as a PSD, because Adobe Premiere Pro will allow us to break this apart into layers and actually work with the individual layers of the document in Adobe Premiere Pro uh, without having to create multiple layers and titles and things in Adobe Premiere Pro, which is kind of clumsy. This allows us in a program that we already know and already have worked with to create those different layers and to work with them a little more seamlessly. Okay, so we're going to save this Photoshop document. Uh, it's going to give you this error if you haven't told it to not show. It's hit just hit OK. And then we're going to pop back into Adobe Premiere Pro. I feel like I need like a Nerf ball or something to, to toss at you guys that are not paying attention. What are you doing? Is yours done? But you didn't, yours does not look like mine. Oh. You missed like 12 steps. How do, you do color? How do you do the color? You draw a big shape. Oh. You draw a big box and you make it red. Okay. Try to follow along. So I'm going to leave this Photoshop document open and I'm going to do it on purpose so that you can see how the two programs kind of relate to each other. So. We're going to go into Adobe Premiere Pro again. And uh, and now, if you notice here, I've kind of filled up this box, right? So um, if I needed to um, bring in a new item now, um, I could search for it. So I could create new search for bin or query or whatever. Um, I could use my media browser or I could just go file and I can just say import. 
So when I go file import, it's going to pop open and I'm going to be able to search for that folder that I have my video in. And I'm going to look for the title screen Photoshop document that I already created. When I select this title screen document that I've already created here, it's going to say importing files and it brings up this little window and it asks if I would like to merge all the layers or it gives me the availability to have it be individual layers or I could bring it in as a sequence by itself. I'm not going to do that, but I want to bring in the individual layers. Okay. So you need to make sure that you select individual layers. Um, the footage is going to be just the regular document size, right? If you bring it in as the layer size, certain layers are going to be different sizes, right? Like the, the, the picture of your head is only a portion of the screen. So it could come in and be much bigger or much smaller and be awkward, then you're going to have to reline things back up again. Whereas if we bring it in as document size, this allows uh, it just to fit properly. I can just drag it across onto my timeline and everything should be, uh, should work fairly seamlessly. So make sure that it's individual layers. All of the layers are checked and I'm going to select OK. And it will now bring in a bin for me that says title screen and inside it has all my different items that make up my document. Okay. Obviously if I brought all of those in just one at a time, that's, it's a, it's lovely. I now have a black or a red thing and I can make it as long or as short as I want. If I tried to bring this one in next to it though, it, it doesn't show up at the same time. It's two separate kind of clips, if you will. Uh, and that's obviously not what we want. So we want to make sure that we're stacking them back up again on top of each other. So essentially you're recreating your graphic here with the different puzzle pieces. And, and I would try to stack them in a sem some sem semblance of order that makes it easy to tell what's what uh, in your, your different timelines here. Okay. So right now they're all a little bit on the short side. And right now you've got the red background that starts first and then all the other clips show up. Okay. Obviously that's not what I would consider epically interesting, uh, or very fun. So we want this red background to go from black and to fade in by itself. So this is the cool part about Adobe is that there is like a hundred million different effects and transitions and stuff. So if you go to the effects tab, you can go through and you can select your video transitions and there's all kinds of different transitions. So I could do a flip over a 3d flip over and it's going to show me it's going to spin like that. Does that look very good? Maybe not. Um, I would tend to start a video with a dissolve, right? Or we would start it with a dip to black maybe. So you'd have this basic dip to black. And now it's hard to sort of see here. I'll try to move these down a little so everyone can see better because we're only making like a short little video, right? So we have zero on our timeline. Maybe I'll move this back like one second. So we've got black and then it fades into red. Okay. And all I had to do there was take this effect and drag it on top of the various clips that I want them to be. Okay. So that fades in and it takes like one and a half seconds for it to be fully faded in. And then we're going to take the picture of ourselves and our text and we're going to have our text. You can kind of pre stagger it like this so that the text shows up 
in the same order that you would read it, right? Okay, and then I'm gonna let you have a little bit of fun with it. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a cross dissolve on my picture and I'm gonna, you can actually extend the cross dissolve for quite a bit longer. So if you wanna get closer, you can continue, like I say, to zoom in or you can zoom out. So I'm gonna have this cross dissolve be really slow so that it really slowly fades in. I wonder if, I think if you do a dip to black, it'll actually mess everything, is that? Yeah, it like dips the whole video. If you notice like halfway through there, it dips everything to black. So you gotta be careful which transitions you pick because some of them affect the entire, um, the entire screen kind of thing, right? Um, this film dissolves a, another good one. It kind of just fades in, right? And then I want this text to do something kind of interesting. So maybe I'm gonna do a push for the first one and a, uh, maybe a paint splatter for the second one. and a page peel for this third one, okay? So what it's gonna do is it's gonna do different things. Oh, the page peel is lame, that doesn't work. Let's do... <laughs> we'll do this whip pen, okay? Um, a quick way for you to play your video and to see what it looks like is using the space bar. Um, assuming you have the timeline selected, you can hit the space bar and it'll play through your video. So you should have something similar to this. Actually, I really like that whip. I'm gonna put that on both. I'm just gonna put it on all three of them, I think. You can have whatever you want. I like these. I think it looks like a solid thing. This fade is a little too long for my liking. So it fades in. There, there, there. And you're done. Okay. Now, I... The other day... There is lots of places online that you can get. Um, there's lots of different places where you can get kind of stock, uh, royalty-free music and stuff. Some of them you have to have places or have to have like licensing. Some of them you have subscriptions and all this kind of stuff. Um, ben Sound is what it's called. Uh, is a good website that I found that allows you to grab chunks of sound or or kind of background sounds and stuff that give you the ability to um, to use them free. Uh, they ask you that you give them credit in your YouTube videos if you're going to post it to YouTube or whatever. Um, unless you're going to buy a subscription, then you don't have to post uh, that stuff. Um, so depending on what you're doing, if we're doing like say a corporate kind of thing. Right, kind of a fun little deal. I'm gonna download this one and I'm just gonna download the free version of it. So it will download that audio for me. So again, it's bensound.com. When you're, when you're making your videos, you can go to bensound and um, find a video. You don't have to do this right now, um, but I just wanted to show you this at the same time, how a pretty semi-boring video doesn't really look like a whole lot. Um, when you have this stuff happening, but if I go in here and I add in a sound that I just downloaded, <laughs> I'm going to cut this and I'm going to put it in my folder with all my other resources here. So if I take my Ben sound video, right? And then I'm gonna put this in as my audio track. 
So now, right? Just gives it a little more feel. It's still kind of a lame video. I'm not gonna lie. Like we're not we're not making uh, the next Jurassic Park here, but it gives you something. And then to finish up our little basic video here, we are going to shrink all these because we don't want to sit and have the the music can play for a little while. But if this is just sort of like the intro to our video, really like after five six seconds, this is like enough we're, we're done right so i'm going to shrink the ends of all these clips to that point i'm going to watch it one more time make sure that this one is not too short to be able to read it right so it might be a little on the short side so maybe i'll extend that out just a pinch oops okay and then All of these four clips, I want them all to have the same um, effect and also this last clip, which is extended way too long here. Bring this one in. And same with our music. I'm gonna shrink our music down and I'll show you how to fade that out nicely. So all of our clips, this is the point where they must be on fully. Um, if I started to put in a fade now, it would actually take away from the clip. So I'm going to look here. It's about it's not quite seven seconds. So we want maybe like a two second fade at the end. So I'm going to extend these all by two seconds. This is pretty long and exaggerated. I don't think you'd ever do it quite this slow, but whatever. It works for what we're, we're learning here. Um, again, I'm going to go back to my effects. Now I'm going to find that um, I can do the dip to black or I can do a cross dissolve or I can do this film dissolve. Um, I'm going to try this film dissolve for all of these, right? So I'm going to bring this all in on all, all of the clips so they will all fade at the same time and for the same general duration. Right, if I want, I can extend these all, right? I want them all to be a two second dissolve. And then our music, we want our music to fade out so that it's at zero when these all hit black. So same deal, but now I'm not doing a video transition. I'm going into the audio transitions and I'm gonna use a constant power fade and same deal, extend it for those two seconds. So now my video is playing along. And it, and it fades out, right? Um, <laughs> uh, Seth is saying Kevin McLeod. Is it a website or what is it? But like lots of copyright free kind of stuff yeah okay perfect anyways so really simple video you're gonna create fades out to black right obviously that's a slightly abrupt ending here so maybe you even want to bring this sound one forward just a, a little bit more right so that it it still is playing music as it gets to black but it's kind of your call as the designer, how you want to have that be set up. Um, now that we have this little video created, um, very similar concept to um, Adobe InDesign in the sense that uh, you can't, like if you sent me this video clip, if you if you saved this Premiere Pro file and tried to send it to me, it would be it would be nothing. I wouldn't even be able to start to open it. Um, because I don't have the graphics, I don't have the music file, I don't even have access to your F drive to create those things, right? And so you really, this next thing is super, uh, okay, hang on a sec, Daniel, I'll answer your question in a second. Um, 
the the next step is is majorly majorly important okay um, you need to export your video when you're finished uh, it is not considered a I would not consider this a video yet this is a video project or this is a Premiere Pro project um, you are making a video but you have not made the video yet until you finish this next step uh, what's your question yes okay so I'll back up just slightly so let me kind of do this in order so uh, Daniel was saying that his picture is like way too big so it came in as, as something that was like gigantic if, if I'm understanding that correctly right yes yeah you think so okay so it's probably that your your video is like your video timeline was different than your um, uh, your Photoshop project okay uh, if your video is too if your picture comes in too big um, there's a couple different things I'm gonna make this uh, what's the best way to show this okay if it's too big you can double click on the program screen with that clip selected and you can change the size of it just like you would be able to in any editing program like in, in Photoshop or whatever it's just like a transform thing um, be careful though because if you have multiple elements that are all different sizes uh, you want to make sure you don't change them all to weird sizes so the first thing I would do is there's an automatic if you right click on a clip there's a an auto scale to frame size here so by hitting scale to frame size it will make sure that it shrinks your video footage down to fit within the frame um, if I brought in I wonder if I can make something that's really big here so if I go to this Photoshop document and I go image image size and I make it substantially bigger so say I make the height to be 28 it's gonna make it gigantic right this will answer your guys's question uh, how to it, how to bring things in as well so so I've made this giant picture here I'm gonna save as uh, title screen two, so I don't overlap my other one. So this this is now monstrously huge. So when I go file, import, right? I'm going to import the title screen two. Um, this time I'm going to import it just as one one picture, just for for reference here. So I'm going to say merge all layers. And hit OK. If you're bringing this in and you want the layers, you need to go to individual layers, right? But I'm going to merge all the layers. Hit OK. So it brings it in as this big picture here. If I drag this picture and I plunk it onto my screen, it's much, much, much too big, yeah. right? But the, the it's the right um, it's the right aspect ratio. So all I have to do is right click on it and say scale to frame size, and it shrinks it and it fits to the the right frame size. Right, and you can do that same action to multiple layers. So you could click one, shift, like hold shift down and select all five of them. You could right click, and you could say scale to frame size on all of them, and they would all adjust accordingly. Okay. Um, uh, what was the question? Uh, that answered your question, right? The import button is grayed out. Yeah, like I can't click it. <clears throat> it might be because you're in the middle of an action. So try hitting the enter key uh, and like get out of whatever you're working on. And then try again, go to go to import. Did that allow you to get unstuck? No, yes, maybe so. Not doing anything? Are you... Oh, 
Oh, that's sorry. That's because I took control of it. Hang on. Um, if you do this, if you just double click here, does this work? No, nothing. <coughs> weird that you have this like lock here that I don't know why Now you should be able to edit things, Seth. Uh, Seth had accidentally uh, gone in here and clicked this. Um, you can apparently you can make this uh, read only. Um, yes, I'll save. Uh, and it, I guess it just locks it so that you don't accidentally mess it up, um, which is kind of a cool feature. Actually, I've never ever ever used that. I didn't even know it existed. So. Kudos to you for finding something new. Um, anyways, we'll keep it in edit mode. Uh, okay, so we have our files. I'll, I'll show you how to export this so that this is kind of finished. Um, but then I want to, you guys can just kind of watch. And if you have any questions, I'd love to field uh, questions from you guys in terms of different techniques you'd like to know how to do so that when you're doing your video editing and stuff, uh, you can work through it. Obviously, the basic tutorial this will be the finish of the basic tutorial but um, we'll still we can field some questions and they're they're nice to have on in terms of going through things so um, uh, I, I know I didn't mention it before but you can mess around with your like panels and your tabs and stuff you can totally customize your view to how you best work um, if you want let like for me a lot of times this source monitor it's it's kind of just wasting a bunch of space so sometimes I might take the effects tab and I might bring it up here on the side so that I split this one in half so that I have my effects readily available. Um, and then I can also edit here. Uh, I can still preview stuff um, very effectively. And then one thing that we didn't talk about is the effects controls, this one here. So when I've selected a clip, these effects controls, they talk about individual clips specifically so this clip i could change the position of it um, in terms of i can move it left or right i could scale it up or down um, and all of this stuff can be set up um, i could rotate it if i wanted to um, so i could kind of make my own custom transition if you will um, and if you're doing a lyric video, if you choose to do um, a lyric video for one of your final videos, the you will find this stuff invaluable in the sense that you can go through and um, hang on, I got to put this back to where it was before. You can go in and you can actually do what's called keyframing. Uh, so I can bring this to the beginning of this clip. I can turn on these stopwatches here. Uh, and for rotation and what happens is as the clip comes forward I can actually take this and I can add in now if I started to rotate this and then I moved a little further forward Right, then I move further forward. Then I move further forward. Uh, I want this to be zero again. Right, um, it's actually gonna like animate that text now in a crazy way, like it's gonna come swirling in and back up again because of the way that I've set up that rotation. Um, and so there's like a whole bunch of crazy stuff you could do to yeah go and to all your different 
uh, stuff. I could I could make it get bigger. I could get make it get really small, right? I could also change the position and stuff. And a lot of this can also be done like super custom. You can go in and make a whole bunch of different adjustments to it. If I drop this arrow down, I can actually like change points all around and I can change the velocity as to like how fast it's moving from one point to the other and it there's a lot of crazy stuff you can do uh, I would need to make this go back to the beginning here though um, so if I put a, a stop in here and then I res reset it right so you can see that there's almost endless stuff you could do to be creative with your with your text, with your objects, you can do those same animations to everything that you're working with. Um, I am not gonna keep those. <laughs> I'm gonna take them off. So delete those and just reset everything here. Take off the keyframes. Okay, so anyways, back to our normal basic video. And then this, like I said, is this is a project, right? We haven't done anything with this really like to make it into a full video. So I have to export it just like we had to export to PDF in InDesign for Adobe. We need to go file, export, and we're gonna export our media. Now, this will be grayed out. If you've clicked on your, say your program window or you're up in your effects window, when you go to a, like file, export, media, Oh, maybe they fixed it. It always used to like not even show up. Like you couldn't even do anything. Nothing would happen. Uh, although nothing is happening. So maybe it still doesn't happen. Maybe they just didn't gray it out in the new version. Who knows? Um, file, export, media. Uh, let's see if something works this time. Yeah, there, that worked better. Okay, so just make sure you have your timeline selected. It works the best when you have your timeline selected. We're gonna go to file export media and then by default it often will pop up with the h.264 encoding which is the standardized um adobe or uh, like adobe's equivalency for what works on youtube um, if you look here for output, it says classroom video is going to output to the basic test video write.mp4. Um, this is a file format that YouTube will accept. Uh, it's 1080p. Uh, it's progressive hardware encoding, blah, 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 blah. All the different stuff sets up here. It tells me what my basic video settings are, that it's 1920 by 1080. It tells me it's 29.9 frames per second. And most of this default stuff, I never, ever, ever touch. Um, I'm not what I would consider an expert in video and all the different formatting. Like, look at them. There's 30 different types of things you can pick. Um, when I started doing video editing back in the day, AVI was the, the standard and we would sometimes use Windows Media, sometimes QuickTime, but this H.264 is the standard for YouTube. So we're going to stick with that because it works the best for us. Um, it tells us what our estimated file size is, is 12 megabytes, which is, is not super huge because it's not a very big video. Um, you can kind of scrub through here, uh, minus the sound, uh, and it'll just, you can just make sure you've got the whole video. Um, it's only a, like a nine second long video. We don't want, if all of a sudden this thing said that it was like two hours and 29 minutes, um, we would, it would, trigger you that there was an issue so you'd want to cancel make sure there wasn't some random clip that you had accidentally left way down your timeline um, so this shows us what is going on um, we're going to hit export at that point and this is such a short little video it's only going to take like a few seconds for it to render and now if i go to my <laughs> video folder nothing's there okay so the reason that that happened is because 
you have to have to have to do this one step. So when you go file, export, media, you have to check where this is going. Okay, so you need to click on this output name and this will allow you to like find out where it's going. So in this case, it's going to my some random place that I didn't want it to go, right? So I need to go to my F drive. I need to go to my video folder and now the video will get exported to the proper place. So when I hit save and I hit export, it's going to analyze the sound in the video. It's going to analyze the video itself and it exports it out. And now my finished video should show up where I expected it to show up, which was in my video folder with the name basic test video, right? Uh, underscore one. And if I double click on this, it'll now play as an actual video in Okay. Uh, yeah. So that's that's how that all works. Okay. I realized I don't know if the I just realized that now it should work. Yeah. I had turned off the recording for sound the ambient noise sound. So those of you who are online, I apologize. You didn't have any sound for the watching me work with sound on the video clip, but um, if you have questions specific to that, let me know and, uh, and I can help you out with that. So um, now that would be considered sort of finished if you will. So I will post, I'll, I'll stop at this point and I'll post this video later today. So tomorrow we'll, uh, Tomorrow we'll get back into the same um, similar stuff, I guess you could say. I'm going to post this video so you can all work on it tomorrow. And also we will be able to go through the various different um, assignments that you've already got in terms of your footage and try to compile that into something that will be more like a video instead of just a whole bunch of random shots. Um, I'll be available to help out. Um, there won't be as much teaching. It'll be more just question and answer. But uh, yeah, tomorrow should be a fun day. And uh, thank you for those of you who joined us uh, from online. Um, I know it's not ideal for you to be watching online instead of be here with us in person, but I'm glad you were able to take advantage of the technology. And it's good to uh, hear from you or see your logo on the screen here. And uh, yeah, other than that, Hope you all have a fun uh, fun day. So to those of you online, uh, we'll, uh, we'll see you later. And I will post this uh, video, not the whole thing of course, but I'll post the main tutorial portion of it. I'll, I'll cut it down and post it for later today for you to be able to see that. So anyways, thank you again. Uh, yeah, talk to you later.